Good time of day to you folk, it is I, Jacob. And I, Dave. Here today to talk about AMD's latest and greatest, third gen Ryzen. Yeah, these CPUs were announced over at CES by the prestigious Dr. Lisa Su, the first to be built on the 7 nanometer process node with a revolutionary chiplet design at their core. For the first time in a long time, AMD could have Intel on the ropes, but will 3rd gen Ryzen be the knockout punch many gamers are hoping for? Let's take a look at what we can expect. Now, before we continue, let's get one thing straight. It's either 3rd gen Ryzen, Ryzen 3000 series, the Matisse codename, or maybe, maybe Ryzen 3K, because it kind of sounds cool. It's definitely not Ryzen 3. Never. 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 No. Nope. Now, we've already got one of those, and they're the budget chips. Uh, okay, all right. The rage is subsiding, on with the show. Dr. Lisa Su, AMD's esteemed CEO, officially announced the third generation Ryzen processors will be landing on shelves in the middle of this year. Previous leaked slides denote that the Taiwanese Computex tech show that runs from May 28th to June 1st will be when motherboard manufacturers should get X570 motherboards out the door. So you'd hope some CPUs might be announced at the big show too. We also have good reason to believe that AMD will be launching new products over at Computex. We have our ways of getting information out of people. <laughs> yes, we have our ways. So what do we know about Zen 2 and the 3rd gen Ryzen? First off, we know all that good stuff shown off at the next Horizon Tech Day will largely still apply to our consumer desktop chips too. That means the Zen 2 architecture co-brandishing 7 nanometer and 14 nanometer chiplets. This allows the red team the ability to weigh up the balance between power and performance with its initial designs. AMD's been touting some pretty impressive power efficiency gains on TSMC's dense process node. But it's not just hypothetical performance we're talking here. Live on stage at CES, the red team pit its 8 core 3rd gen Ryzen engineering sample against Intel's Core i9-9900K. The resulting bloodbath was nearly pulled from the stream for its graphic nature. While the Ryzen chip only slightly surpassed the equally core heavy Intel chip in Cinebench R15, it got there with a fraction of the power demand, at 133 watts to 180 watts respectively. Yep. Promising stuff, and when it comes down to actual processing performance, AMD has that seemingly sorted too. Each tiny 7 nanometer chiplet is packed with up to 8 individual cores. That means we can expect single chiplet AMD Matisse chips to feature up to 8 cores of processing power. Yeah, and performance looks hella promising already, but wait, there's more. Yes, Sue wanted to tease the CES crowd a little further, holding up a totally bare third gen Ryzen die on stage. So what do you ask? Well, my dear Watson, with my superior intellect and superior deduction skills, I've determined there's just about enough space under that Ryzen integrated heat spreader to fit a whole other 7 nanometer chiplet. See, now if you look here, you know, Lisa Sue confirmed there will be more than eight processing cores, right? Like, she'd already said that. Despite only having an engineering sample to hand, AMD proved the Zen 2 design is capable of taking on the very best from Intel's lineup, the 9th gen Core i9-9900K. Matching core for core, AMD's 3rd gen Ryzen sample managed to slightly surpass Intel's 9900K in Cinebench R15, scoring 2057 to the i9-2040 all the while sucking 47 watts less from the outlet. But how did AMD do it? Of course the 7 nanometer process had its part to play in all that power efficiency and performance, but some of the performance catch up on AMD's part is down to changes in the front end. Branch prediction, instruction prefetching, instruction cache, and floating point performance have all been enhanced or optimized with Zen 2 to offer greater throughput and performance while sticking to the necessary power envelope for its desktop parts. We're hoping this increase in instructions per clock amounts to faster gaming performance, traditionally where AMD chips have lagged behind Chipzilla's silicon. Somewhere between those two chiplets is the perfect blend of clock speed and core count for gaming, and however much you might want to brag about your 16 core Ryzen chip, the best gaming chip will probably be far more modest. AMD hasn't gone as far as confirming pricing as of yet, or even confirming SKUs whatsoever. So let's get speculating. Yeah, what fun. With core counts on the rise, we may see a shift upwards in upper tier pricing for the really core heavy chips, potentially demanding the Ryzen 9 brand name. AMD does have a habit of ruthlessly copying Intel's naming conventions, even if everyone finds it incredibly annoying and confusing. With Intel introducing the Core i9 tier to the desktop with the 9th gen, we wouldn't be all that surprised to see Sue swoop in and gobble up that brand name for the red team's top chip. Assuming a similar Ryzen 3, 5 and 7 product stack for the rest of the lineup, we can expect individual product prices to fall somewhere in the region of its second gen Ryzen 4 bears. The Ryzen 7 2700X, an 8 core 16 thread CPU, launched for $329, and the best in class gaming CPU, the Ryzen 5 2600, cost just $190. That's an incredibly competitive price, and we can expect AMD to be pushing hard into this dominion again with its 3000 series CPUs. 
Yet Intel set the precedent with its $579.9900K. If enthusiasts want top performance, they are willing to pay for it. So while AMD may offer more silicon for your money with Matisse, it could reasonably charge well upwards of the Ryzen 7 2700X's price tag to deliver on the potential of 12 and 16 core enthusiast-grade computing. Exciting, no? With AMD expected to drop 3rd gen Ryzen May June time, further leaks, benchmarks and price points are sure to start appearing across the web. Of course, that means this video will one day cease to be relevant, in which case you'll want to head over to PCGamesN.com for the word on the street. And while you're messing about back there, make sure to give us a like, subscribe and ring that bell if you don't want to find out our ways of making people talk. Legally, I'm pretty sure we have to say that's not actually a threat. Or is it? It's not. Whatever. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.